He's a loving God. And just think about that every time that his back was whipped, cancer died. Every time his back was whipped, diabetes was healed. Every time his back was whipped, depression was healed. Every time his back was whipped, anxiety was healed. Every time his back was whipped, your finances were put together. See, there's a reason why that when Jesus got to the cross, he declared it is finished. Everything was done at the cross. Salvation and healing was finished. People may not understand, the world may not understand. <coughs> but I'm here to tell you this morning that God is in this place and is getting ready to move in the mighty ways. And it's not because I'm here, it's not because my uncle is here, but God is here this morning. He's here. We are just the instruments he has decided to use. But it's his healing power, not mine. It is his presence where you find fullness of joy. It is not mine. Amen. It is his peace that surpasses all understanding, Amen. not mine. Amen. Because when things seem to be out of control in my life, I run to the master. Amen. I don't run to a man or to a woman. I run to the presence of the almighty God. Amen. See, when I'm sick in body, I believe in doctors. My mother-in-law is a nurse, a great nurse. But see, when the medical profession runs out of answers, I turn to the great physician. Boy, you missed the time to shop like that. He's the great physician. My father had a heart attack in my apartment in Berwyn, Illinois. 20% of his heart was working. Doctors may not have known what to do. Doctors would have given up. But my God stepped in. My wife, as she was pregnant with our second daughter, Addison, she had a C-section with our first daughter. They told her, well, because of your insulin deficiency and the medication you're on, another C-section will have to take place. We believe what the Word of God said. Amen. And we pray for our natural deliverance. We pray and we fast. Our church pray, family pray in California, in Indiana, in Texas, in Chicago, in Berlin. And what happened on January 13, 2009? My wife, my wife had a natural childbirth. The doctors were standing in amazement. Why? Because his word shall not come back void. His promises are yea and amen. amen. And I don't know about you, but this is where I stake my life. You know, it's getting a little warm in here, so I'm going to take this off. I was trying to do a little dignified, but that didn't work so good. Everything that we see going on in the world today, hope, hope, all we hear is hope. Bring you hope, bring you change, hope. I don't know what your political views are. Honestly, I don't even care what your political views are. My view is what the Lord of God says. This is the King of Kings in the Lord of God. I pray for our president in office. I pray for him more because he's a Sox fan and we need to get rid of that. I pray that the anointing of the Chicago Cubs will fall in his life. But I pray for our president. Whether I voted for him or not, I pray for our president. That God will intervene in his life. That God will intervene in the lives of our mayor and our congressmen and our staff. That yeah, we see someone sitting in a in the White House. But I know that God is still seated on the throne of heaven. My hope is in God. You may be praying for family that's unsaved. I believe in God. 
I'll save those on the same end. I believe that with all my heart. I believe that God will pour into your finances as you are faithful in your time and in your He's a healing God. A healing God. He healed my life. November 2nd, 1991, at the age of 13, at a church called Calvary Group in Hammond, Indiana. My uncle was there leading worship that night. It was during the three day revival. You ever been to a Hispanic church during three day revival? You're there a very long time. But there's always food in the basement after that. And I remember that Friday night, my uncle was going to come pick up me and my sister. We were going to stay at his apartment in the end. I remember that Friday coming home from school, I had a headache. And I said, oh, I don't want to go. But God had other ideas. My uncle came to pick us up late Friday night. He had a meeting at church. We stopped on the way and got white castles. <laughs> Played Monopoly when we got home. And I remember going to that Saturday afternoon service. And God did some great things there. And I grew up in church. I had experienced the presence of God in my life. I had experienced His power. It wasn't new to me. But that Saturday night, when we went back for sure, I remember Brother Abel was there. Minister. And this church had a very big platform. And pews that just went from so point all the way back, one row all the way back, and had just one aisle and side door that would lead you either out the door or downstairs to the basement. And I remember the altars opened, the presence of God was flowing, there were songs singing, and I remember standing in that pew all by myself with my parents about two or three pews behind me. And I remember people kneeling at the altar, people were standing, and there was people kneeling. There was an open space on this side of the sanctuary. And my eyes kind of focused on this spot. And I felt the Lord say, that spot's for you. No one else is going up. And I turned and looked. I thought somebody was whispering in my ear. I my mom like that. And I recognized it was God. I said, oh. So being in, growing up in Hispanic churches, you kind of get a sense of when church is going to be over. I said, well, I'm just going to get up my pew and walk downstairs like one in the basement. Smell the food and we grow when we come down there. Little did I know as I got out of that seat and began to walk out, I walked right past that door. And I remember falling on my knees and this And I remember just sobbing in the presence of God. I remember just crying as my knees hit the floor. And I remember someone putting their arms around me from behind and I looked and I could not see anybody. God says I'm here. And I'm calling you now. And I remember being led in a sinner's prayer by the pastor of that church. And I remember my uncle coming up to me as he knelt next to me. He asked me, Did you accept Jesus? And I looked at him and I said, Yes. And I remember he got on the microphone and made that declaration that I had given my life. My life has never been the 